activism begins with ACT. The Rush Belleville Show features the stories of hardworking grassroots activists working for an end to prohibition in today's activist agenda. Welcome back, everybody. 32 after the hour, and we're making our call out to John Pardee from the uh, from the Ohio Rights Group, who'll be joining us by telephone, and I think we've got him on the line. John, are you there? I am here. Oh, glad to have you here. Thanks for being here. Uh, Ohio Rights Group, can you tell us a little bit about the organization? Uh, yeah, we were uh, uh, formed uh, just earlier this year, uh, kind of an outcropping of the whole, whole old Ohio uh, Medical Cannabis Association, and um, we have a, a, a new directive this year and a new energy. We're trying to get therapeutic cannabis and industrial hemp on the ballot here in Ohio, and our goal is to get it on the ballot here in 2014. And we've just, uh, this last May, received uh, approval from the Ohio Attorney General and the ballot board to proceed to collect the 385,000 signatures of registered Ohio voters, and if we're able to do that, then we will get it on a ballot. Fantastic. Now, this is something we cover in a lot of states that have the initiative petition uh, in, in their constitution. And uh, just south of you, down in Arkansas, they've been going through a lot of hell with their attorney general just trying to get the title uh, uh, approved so they can gather signatures. So this means you've been through that step. You've already gotten the title approved. You're ready to go. You can go get your SIGs. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're building our army. Um, we've got uh, like 40 offices uh, around the state already, uh, and we've got well over 2,000 volunteers. Um, you know, we, our petitions are now downloadable uh, online, um, so people can actually download them from all four corners of the state um, and and start collecting signatures of friends and neighbors. Um, a lot of good things are happening here. Uh, our, our big challenge really is, you know, Ohio's an expensive state, so funding our campaign is uh, is going to be the biggest challenge we have to date. Yeah, in general guidelines that I've heard is it's anywhere from a dollar to two dollars you have to budget per every signature you need to get, and then usually you need to get, you know, 60 to 75 percent more signatures than what the statute says, just so, you know, because some of them get disqualified. So that sounds to me like you're looking around half a million to a million dollars you're going to need to raise. Is that about right? Is that what your estimates are? Yeah, yeah. We've Well, we've had, if, if we were to hire a professional uh, signature again a company, which we're hoping to do. Uh, we're hoping that you know we'll get funded um, to that point. Um, if we can do that, then you know, we've had quotes in the north of a million dollars. You know, mm -hmm. 1.4 million to be exact. Um, in, and you know, in order to you know, hire a firm that, that can get it done. But right now, we're doing it strictly on you know volunteer, uh, you know, and grassroots. It's just uh, it's been kind of fun watching the energy come you know come together. Everybody in Ohio really seems to be coalescing behind this movement because they see the power of what we've got going, and and, they, and the, our message is definitely resonating. We're speaking with John Pardee, the president of Ohio Rights Group, and the possibility of getting medical marijuana on the ballot in Ohio. Uh, what does your polling look like, John? Actually, our polling is very good. Uh, the Columbus Dispatch commissioned the poll earlier this year, and they showed uh, support for therapeutic cannabis in Ohio. At uh, I believe it was around 67 percent was uh, the support for therapeutic cannabis. Um, you know, full legal is underwater. It's in the mid 30s. Um, this state is not ready for full legal, but that's not what we're shooting for. We're here for you know, the patients and, and the veterans and, and folks who you know, need it uh, medicinally, and for our farmers who, who you know, will have the opportunity to be able to grow industrial hemp and. Uh, open up a whole new cash crop uh, for our farmers as well. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. We'll come back to the medical, uh, the therapeutic issue in a second. But uh, uh, the industrial hemp issue, this is something that's been pushed now in Oregon and Maine. I mean, states have legalized this before, but they've always depended on the DEA for a permit. And now states are starting to say, to hell with the DEA permit, go ahead and grow hemp. Is that the direction you're looking for in Ohio, a, a permitless sort of hemp? Well, it's kind of what we're doing here in Ohio is unique, and it actually involves both the industrial hemp and the therapeutic cannabis because what we're doing is um, our amendment is to amend the Constitution to reestablish our rights that were taken away by prohibition. And if you look at the Ohio State Constitution, the preamble uh, basically states that you know you know all of our citizens are you know free to pursue you know health and safety and liberty and property, and so. 
what we're going to do is we're going to try to, um, um, you know, add that language to our Constitution because once our, our rights have been established, you know, they can't be taken away regardless of whether a farmer wants to grow hemp or a patient wants to uh, you know, grow cannabis, uh, you know, for the Parkinson's disease. So, um, you know, it's, it's our amendments been looked at by, you know, reformers around the country, and they say it really could be a model for the nation. It could be a model for, you know, California and for Michigan, some of these places where they're really having a lot of problems with home rule, um, you know, communities, you know, trying to prohibit, uh, you know, sale or distribution of cannabis. Um, you know, all the problems that they're having in Michigan right now where they're striking down, you know, the, the dispensary provision and and making the manufacture of, of hemp, of, of hash oil, you know, akin to a meth lab, things like that. So, um, you know, what we do is we establish, reestablish our rights to grow, you know, sell, manufacture, and, and, and you know, and use, you know, cannabis in any and all forms. Wow. Now, uh, this is, you know, this is the route that, uh, Colorado took with its medical marijuana and its legalization, uh, the, the constitutional amendment route. Uh, does this provide any, uh, extra roadblocks though? I, I, I understand that it's more difficult to pass a constitutional amendment because people are less likely to want to tinker with their constitution. I, I, yeah, you're right. I, I mean, but Ohio is actually, you know, it's fairly progressive in the fact that it allows Citizens' Initiative, uh, you know, that opportunity. Um, as a matter of fact, I believe I'm correct. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I believe the the uh, the gambling initiative went through a uh, constitutional amendment as well. So, you know, so I think if if the if the Ohio voters are comfortable with that, I think I don't think they're going to have an issue uh, with it, especially when we're looking at it not for recreational, it's, it's for you know our farmers and for our patients, and uh, I don't think that's going to be a tough sell. Um, you know, in, in Ohio. Now, the news that came down today is Governor Quinn in Illinois signing the bill to legalize their uh, therapeutic use of cannabis, but it's an extremely restrictive bill. There's no home growing. There's a very tight list of conditions, uh, tracking of how much uh, patients are buying and so forth. Uh, That's just, you know, one state away from you with Indiana in between. Uh, Is that going to affect people's uh, interpretation of your amendment? And can you give us some of the details with respect to home grow, possession, plant limits, et cetera? Um, well, our language, uh, you can, and you can view our, our petition online at ohiorights.org, but our language specifically indicates that it, it doesn't, you know, we didn't get into the whole a number of plant rule. Our language basically says sufficient to the needs of the patient. Because if you look at it in, in context of the different uh, patient needs, someone may need to be growing some high CB flower and whatever they need for their particular need is one thing. But if you have another patient who's juicing the plant, you know, for, for cannabis juice, you're going to need a whole lot more plant matter mm-hmm. than someone who's, who's growing, you know, like a high CBD, uh, you know, a, a flower. So in, in lieu of trying to establish those kind of parameters, what we've done is we, we basically dictated that it, you know, needs to be sufficient to the needs of the patient. And we're leaving it up to the yet to be formed Ohio Cannabis Control Commission uh, to, in, in, you know, in, enact the laws that will, you know, establish, you know, how this is managed in the state of Ohio. Because every 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 industry in Ohio has a commission. You know, al- alcohol, liquor, and gambling, and everything else has a commission. Our commission is no different, and it won't cost the taxpayers a dime. But it'll all be self funded through you know taxes and fees and fines. So the initial vote on the constitutional amendment won't have any specific plant limits within it. However, this this board would be able to establish plant limits later. Well, what the board is going to do is going to establish the regulation, and nothing the board can do can can undermine a patient right. You know, so okay. you know our board is specifically designed to be you know nonpartisan. Um, it has a broad base uh, distribution of, of folks from. Uh, you know, the therapeutic community, from the agricultural community, uh, from uh, law enforcement, uh, mental health. We, you know, we, we made sure that it was a broad coalition uh, that would sit on this board and dictate all the policies that, um, you know, how this would be governed. Um, it's completely transparent, nonpartisan, and self-funded. And, uh, you know, we think it's uh, going to be a, a good way to uh, 
enact these laws because you know everything changes you know mm-hmm. right now we have a set of specific uh you know ailments that are that are called out for um in, in the amendment um but who knows five years from now they're going to find out that cbd you know is, as can be therapeutically used for x y or, or z disease and we don't want to limit you know that ability so the board will take, take the science that we know and apply it to how how cannabis is used in, in the state of ohio Speaking with John Pardee, the president of Ohio Rights Group, and you can find them online at ohiorights.org. And one of the things I found in covering these medical marijuana bills and initiatives in the past is significant pushback from law enforcement who always wants to have what they call bright lines. They want to know an exact amount of plant material, exact number of plants, how big the plants can be. Do you anticipate any pushback from law enforcement by not having any specific limits in your language? Um, I don't know that to be the case. Uh, I don't, I, you know, like I said, I, it's one of the conversations we have yet to have. Um, we, we do have, you know, support from, you know, you know, the forward thinking people in law enforcement because they know by legalizing cannabis, it's actually going to make our streets safer. You're going to have less violence uh, you know, in our streets because you're going to have less contraband substances, you know, that people are going to be fighting over. Um, and, and you ask any police officer, they know they'd rather deal with folks who are involved with uh, you know, cannabis, either medicinally or recreationally, versus you know alcohol or meth or some other you know compounds. So I mean, I, I, on a, you know on a philosophical basis, most of your patrolmen and 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 D officers are are supportive of what we're doing, uh, especially officers from you know law enforcement against prohibition. Yes. I think the the pushback we're going to get is really from you know some of the uh, Sheriff's departments and whatever that depend on federal dollars, you know, from the DEA you know, for enforcement. Obviously, you know, they're they're worried about their their fiefdoms, uh, you know, losing losing funding. So we're you know we're going to get uh, some pushback from them. Now, uh, one last question: Anything with respect to possession limits and dispensaries in your bill? Um, again, a lot of that's all going to be uh, you know left up to the up to the commission. Um, you know, it's, it's important to you know, remember that, you know, everything is, you know, nothing that can be written either by the commission or by the legislator, legislature that would, uh, undermine, uh, that can undermine anybody's rights. So it's, uh, you know, it's kind of going to be, you know, interesting going forward. And our job after, uh, after we win, uh, this is, is then to, you know, make sure we lobby hard to make sure patients' rights are, front and center in every decision that the uh, Cannabis Control Commission enacts. Um, so, yeah, we're, uh, we, uh, we, got, we got a tough uh, road ahead of us, but uh, we feel we're equal to the past. All right. It sounds like you got a lot of work ahead of you, c- collecting over 380,000 signatures, directing everyone to OhioRights.org to help you out. And uh, John Pardee from Ohio Rights Group, thanks for joining us here on the Russ Belville Show. Thanks, Russ. Really appreciate it. All right, stick around, folks. We're going to talk about the latest medical marijuana bill in Illinois and how it illustrates the path into the Box Canyon. Be right back.